What Jason is experiencing is not just limited to what he is seeing and hearing. It is reaching the deepest levels of his mind. Things usually taken for granted, like time, self-identity, and any other aspect of reality, can be as unusual as what he is seeing and hearing. Oh man, it looks like he's really tripping out. Yeah, it looks like he's having a hard time. I should go talk to him to see if he wants any company or help. In the meantime, will you get me um, my sketchbook and a couple glasses of water and sure. put them in the den? Okay. Thanks. Even though most psychedelic difficulties are psychological, not physical, if someone has taken a psychedelic drug and is having a difficult experience, a helper should first assess, is the person concerned about his or her physical safety? If there is any doubt about physical safety, a helper should call 911. If not, try to find out some basic information. What drug does the person think he or she took? How much of the drug does the person recall taking? How long ago does the person recall taking the drug? Is the person on any other medications or drugs, including alcohol? For further background information about drugs and drug combinations, the website www.arrowid.org has potentially useful information. Hey Jason, what's up? How's it going? It's Carol. Remember me? How are you feeling? Um, so I feel like I feel like I'm going insane right now, a little bit. I feel like I need to get out of here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to to talk right now. It's fine. Do you feel physically okay? Yeah, yeah, physically I feel fine. But like the rest of me feels like it's being sucked into some sort of vortex or something. Are you tripping right now? Yeah, yeah, I sure am. I'm tripping my face off. Do you know what you took? I took two hits. Two, two hits of, of LSD acid. Do you know how long ago you took it? Uh... I don't know. Like, just before I came to the party. Whenever, whenever that was. Okay, so that was like two hours ago. So you'll be tripping for at least another six hours. Oh. Hey, just so I know, are you on any other drugs or medications or alcohol? No. That's good. Like, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling really overwhelmed by this whole situation. Like, all the, the noise and the people are making me feel like I'm, I'm going claustrophobic. Well, it sounds like you're having a really intense trip. Would you like some help? Yeah. Like, Do you want to tell me more about what you're experiencing? Well, it's so hard to explain. It's like, I feel like... The room and the noise and the people are overwhelming me and like I feel like all the people in the room are watching me and know that I'm going crazy and know that I'm tripping and it's really weird. Well, I've heard that's a common feeling when people are tripping. Yeah? Actually, I've heard that it's important for a person on psychedelics to explore their feelings even if they're difficult. Hmm. Hey, if you want, Roger and I can hang out with you and just sit with you until you're ready to go home. We're your friends. You can feel safe here. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> um, what, like, what, 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 what should we do here? Hmm. I have an idea. I bet you'd feel a lot more comfortable if you were somewhere quieter where you can just hang out and explore your experience. Yeah, yeah. I would. Come on.
if you need anything else. Or like Florida. Hey, oh. is that the water? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. There you go. Yeah. Let me know if you need anything else, all right? Thanks. Michelle said we can hang out in here. Someone with the opportunity to help someone having a difficult psychedelic experience should keep a few basic principles in mind. If the person is not reporting physical danger, the first thing to do is to create a safe space. A safe space can be created anywhere, but it is best to find a place that is quiet, warm, and comfortable. What are those people laughing at? They're laughing at me, aren't they? Remember, there's a party going on in the other room. It's normal for people to laugh at parties. Yeah, I just know they're laughing at me. What makes you think they're laughing at you? Uh, people like to make fun of me a lot. I used to get made fun of when I was younger. Yeah, I remember that from high school. People were really mean to you, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It actually hurt a lot sometimes. Like, I always tried to laugh it off and then pretend that it, it didn't bother me. But it's weird, like tonight now, I, I feel the same way again, just, just stronger. Yeah, it sounds like you've been carrying the, this with you for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, I guess I have been carrying this one for a long time. Like, people can be really mean and inconsiderate and they don't even realize it. Like, even if I don't admit it to myself, it's still like, it still really affects me. Yeah, of course. So like, what, what do you think I should do about it? Like, I, I, I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. I've... But the fact that you're confronting all these feelings and memories is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Like, just, just, just talking about this stuff makes me feel a lot better. A good phrase to remember is sitting, not guiding. Sit with the person, but do not lead the person away from his or her experience. Let your presence communicate safety and caring, and allow the content of the person's experience to guide any questions you ask or comments you make. If the person is in distress, you may be able to help him or her to explore whatever experiences or issues are being encountered. Staying calm will make it easier to create a trusting environment. This means that you can be helpful just by sitting with someone with a supportive and friendly presence. What's happening when you close your eyes? Oh, my... I I'm seeing all these... Strange shapes and colors swirling into a vortex, but it's not so much like it's not so much like I'm seeing it. It's like I'm a part of it. I can't control it. <laughs>